bats. No one likes bats. They carry all kinds of diseases like rabies, they fly unpredictably, and they're more or less the birds of the underworld. Are bats really as bad as we think they are? Do they really carry rabies? Are they really doing anything helpful for the environment? Before I answer all of these questions, let's take a look at the evolutionary origin of bats, or maybe the lack thereof. Huh? You see, bats have a notoriously incomplete fossil record, with some studies estimating that as much as 88% is currently missing. This is due to their small and delicate skeletal structure. The oldest known bat fossil dates back 52 million years ago, but even this species was known to have powered flight. It's believed that the bat's ancestors must have gone through many stages before evolving powered flight, maybe resembling a small tree-dwelling mammal with the ability to jump and glide, like for instance a flying squirrel. We could predict the selective pressures of an early bat might have favored those with a longer and more dynamic flight pattern. At some point, we really don't know when, in fact it might have only happened once, powered flight emerged proving to be a primary characteristic of all known bats today. Bats belong to the order Chiraptera, which previously was thought to diverge from the suborders Megachiraptera and Microchiraptera, but as of 2001 has been more accurately linked to the suborders Yimpterochiraptera and Yangochiraptera. So yeah, scientists literally just said, let's do yin and yang. I'm not gonna get too deep into every single species of bat, or this video would be like 32 hours long. So to put simply, Yimpterochiraptera contains five families. The kitty's hognose bat, the old world leaf bats, the false vampire bats, the mega bats, the horseshoe bats, and finally the mouse-tailed bats. Whereas the suborder Yangochiraptera contains the sacked wing bats, the smoky bats, the bent winged or long winged bats, the free tailed bats, the ghost face bats, the New Zealand short tailed bats, the sucker footed bats, the funnel eared bats, the bulldog bats, the hollow faced bats, the leaf nosed bats, the disc winged bats, the wing gland bats, and last but not least, the vesper bats. Between all species of bats, some have echolocation, some eat fruit, some eat meat, and some even eat blood. And out of 1,400 species of bats, none of which are blind. So if you've ever heard the saying, dude, you're as blind as a bat, that's actually a misnomer. It's true that many cave dwelling species have reduced vision, but for the most part, they actually have great nocturnal focused vision. It's true that skunks, raccoons, and bats make up the top three carriers of the rabies virus. Rabies is not to be taken lightly. Why, you may ask? Well, the problem with the rabies virus is that once symptoms appear, you're already dead. That's because rabies is virtually 100% fatal regardless of treatment. In short, the virus climbs your nervous system, taking refuge in your brain, and then finally migrates to your salivary glands to spread to another host. By the time you notice foaming at the mouth, the virus is protected by the blood-brain barrier, and attacking the virus means attacking your brain. This gives rabies the highest mortality rate of any disease on Earth, with only 30 documented survivors as of 2023. While bats may be the top spreader of the rabies virus, the odds of any single bat having rabies is around 4.2%, which is a, a little better to say the least. It's also important to consider many interactions with bats during the daytime. Bats are nocturnal, and if you see a bat out during the day, chances are it's probably sick. So don't be like me and try to scoop up the bat for a video. It's not worth it. Just simply admire the creature from a distance. Did you know over 500 plant species rely on bats to pollinate their flowers? This includes species of mango, banana, durian, and agave. In fact, some species like this Crescentia cajete have flowers that only bloom at night. Nocturnal bats just so happen to be an excellent fit for the job. This right here is a leche's long tongued bat, pollinating a Margravia ivenia, a flowering vine from Cuba. And this is a cumin emerald hummingbird. It's getting a free meal without pollinating the plant. 
These plants and bats have evolved a very specific mutually beneficial relationship. You see, the bowl-shaped leaf reflects bat echolocation, guiding their approach like airport landing lights guide their pilots at night. In fact, neither insects nor hummingbirds are large enough to contact the plant's reproductive organs. So even when they find Margravia flowers, they rarely achieve pollination. Therefore, getting rid of bats means erasing a symbiotic partner and in some cases, a plant's only pollinator. Bats also play an essential role in pest control. Just one individual bat can catch over a thousand insects in a single hour of the night, easily cranking in 8,000 or more insects before sunrise. Recent studies estimate that bats eat enough pests to save over a billion per year in crop damage and pesticide costs in the United States corn industry alone. Whether it's chowing down insects, licking up nectar, or eating fruits for seed dispersal, bats play a crucial role in the environment. So yes, a small percentage of bats do carry rabies. And yes, they have giant teeth and an ugly face, but that doesn't mean they can't get a little bit of appreciation for their hard work. And I will say this, I don't recommend you cuddling the first bat you see, but I think we all owe bats for holding it down and getting rid of the true evils of the world.